What's up, lifers? I come back at you with a little trapping video for beginners. For all everybody wanting to trap cones, this is how I do it. I'm not saying it's the right way. I'm not saying it's the only way. I'm just saying it's the way I was taught. But once upon a time, there was a fur market in America where we could sell our coons and we could get, even in Texas, we were getting anywhere from nine to $15 a coon. But to make money doing that, you have to put a lot of traps up, like cover a lot of ground, and be real efficient. And when I say real efficient, I mean real efficient. When I was doing that, I would have anywhere from four to six dozen traps out a night. And I'm going and going and running them every morning. Spend half a day cleaning cones, three hours of the day checking and resetting traps. That's what I did. Unfortunately, we don't have much of a fire market anymore. So when you say my cone trap, it's because they're tearing up my deer feeder. They're tearing up something that somebody don't want them tearing up. Damaging crops, damaging barns, damaging warehouses. I still get calls about that. I don't often film the cone trapping because it's not very glamorous. It generally doesn't get me big views, but I think starting this out, showing y'all how to just basically a beginner from day one go cone trapping what you need. I'm finna bring you what you need. All right, this right here. This right here, I blame for destroying the cone fur market. Right there. I can give that to a six year old kid. Show him how to set it. Show him how to bait it, and he can catch every cone that's out there. That right there is a dog proof. This brand's a Zebra, Z Trap. They make, there's probably 20 different brands out there. Duke makes them, Bridger makes them. I've heard of Diablos. I've heard, there's a hundred different versions of it. Grizz, little Grizzes, and stuff like that. I researched. I converted a man that wasn't using anything but dukes and bridgers to these. They've got a push-pull trigger in them. I don't know if y'all can see that. That's what sets it off right there. When that old cone reaches in there to get the bait, he can push it and set it off, or he can grab that trigger and pull it up and set it off. Either way. But if you're just trying to thin them out around the feeder, that's all you need. You got that right there, you can run your two stakes through, stake it down, two rebar stakes. Let's see if I can grab one right here close. Yeah, we're right here on the edge of my trapping shack, right there. You run two of them. Through them, beat them in the ground, it's time consuming but they will be there when you get there. As long as you don't have where they can climb up a tree. But that's what I used when I first started to learn better. Now, like I say, for just round feeders trying to get rid of a few cones, that'll work. Work good. But like I say, when I was trapping for the fire market, you needed to be fast. When you're trying to run six dozen, seven dozen traps in three or four hours, you need to be fast. It helps when you have somebody to drive. This right here is a setup I went to after a couple of days of trying to beat stakes in and all that and everything. Just take some of this cable, 
you fix it, tell your swivel on your trap, you put your big loop on that cable. I don't know how well that's showing up. Focus, focus, focus. Anyway, the loop, take this. You can throw it around a bridge pile in a tree, whatever you're going to. Just slide that through, cinch it down. Cinch it to the tree, whatever you're going to cinch it to. Bridge pile and tree, whatever. I already have the trap set, the bait already in it. Stick it in the ground and go. I see people use marshmallows and everything else. I use dry cat food, the cheapest stuff that every town has. The cheapest cat food you can get at the Dollar General. Yeah, and they're everywhere. Every vacant field in America evidently now has a Dollar General. That Dollar General cat food and that right there, when cones were nine to fifteen dollars a piece, it paid my house payments for a year. That right there. Make good money. That's why I did YouTube videos. You can make good money. That's fast. If you want to move the trap, you don't have to pull stakes, you don't have to beat stakes in. Just unwrap it and go. Before I was smart enough to go to this, I'll show you another option. The only thing I like, I like this because it's lighter. The other option is even quicker though. It's just heavy. You put your about six foot of chain on the end of your trap and you put it on a drag. You just throw that drag around the tree, set your trap, which you've already got set and ready, food in it, and go. But this takes up a bunch of space and a bunch of weight where with the cables on there, it lightened my truck load better than half. And by the end of the day, you start picking up three dozen of these drags, you done did some work. They're heavy. If you got carry them any at all, they're heavy. If you ever been in my trapping, if it can't be done from a tailgate truck, I generally don't do it. Sometimes on beavers, I'll have to go a couple hundred yards. But coon, coat, Bobcat, Fox, we can do all that from the tailgate. We don't have muskrat here where I live, so I don't know anything to tell you about that. But if you got a coon problem and you're wanting to solve it and you're wanting to solve it quick, get you some of them dog pro traps. And I just recommend, even for the hobby trapper or the trapper trying to clean the coons out of his deer lace around his house, Go on and get you some cable extensions and put on there. Man, it makes things easier. I'm going to show y'all a video probably another week or so after this one comes out. Where I go put these dog proofs out because they're on my feeder. They're on the second feeder I put up. They're on cornbread's feeder, but I want us to get a, probably a week or two of rifle season in before I go in there just tearing things up. Because them cones will spook everything off. Do not, and I'm going to repeat, do not cable them to your feeder leg or you will have a problem. Cones are, a lot of people don't know it, they are some kind of descendant of a bear. And they will tear everything up they get a hold of. Mean, mean animals. The only thing meaner than a coon in the woods is a gray fox and big john. That's it. In East Texas, the only thing that are meaner than a coon is a gray fox and me, I promise you. But, uh.
Yeah, I've been, I've had cones that I've dispatched in the head. <laughs> Get out of the truck, go do something and look and they're crawling out of the truck. It's happened. I was doing a trapping job at a warehouse in a big city, or a big city for me anyway. It's not for most people. But, uh, we couldn't use a bang bang up there. So the way I dispatched them was knock them in the head. It's pretty efficient. Well, I stopped to get lunch after I got through running all my traps up there. And I was sitting in Taco Bell uptown. And I look out there, and there goes one of my cones out of the back of the truck, and it was gone. And I'm telling you, it shouldn't have been able to do that, but they're tough, mean, angry little animals. So then Taco Bell had a cone problem, I guess, until it found somewhere else to go. But uh, trapping adventures happen. I hope y'all learned something from this one. Like I say in all the videos, thumbs up, thumbs down. If you don't like my video, tell me why you don't like it. Tell me what I need to change. How to change it. How to make it better. That's what I'm trying to do every day. Is make these videos more educational. More exciting. I know the ones y'all just watched hadn't been exciting. But I wanted the younger generation... The guy that's on the deer lease that is tired of feeding the cones, tired of his feeder getting tore up by the cones, to know how to solve the problem. If you get some of these dog proof traps, my opinion, Big John's opinion, do not put marshmallows in them. Everybody and their brother is going to tell you to put marshmallows in them. Dry cat food. They run a whole lot better with dry cat food in them. That marshmallow gets down in there, or in Texas anyway, we got a problem with fire ants. Even during the winter time, it'll be cool. In the mornings, a lot of time in the middle of the day, it'll get up to 80 degrees. That old marshmallow get sticky and it'll stick that trigger up where they can't pull it up. Get a little rain on them marshmallows, they'll do the same thing, don't matter how hot or cold it is. They get sticky in there and stick that trigger up, and then they can't set it off. Come up and your trap's knocked over and you think somebody kicked it over. And all the cones kicked it over because you had your tra trigger stuck with sugar and sticky. Y'all tell me in the comments if you learned anything. Anything else you want to know about it, I'm going to film when I set them up out here. I think I still got six or eight dog proofs. I think six on the cable. So, yeah, when the coming market fell, I sold a bunch of them. I just kept enough to get by if I had a job or something or I needed to do what I need to do here. When I planted watermelons, I kept the cones thin out anyway, but I hadn't planted watermelons in two years, so they got thick again. So, it's about time to thin them out. I got people that want to eat them, so I'll give them to them. They can eat them. I guess I've rambled on long enough. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Now, the only thing I will add as an attractant, if I'm having trouble and it's getting real cold and they can't smell that cat food as good, I'll add a little bit of fish oil. You can buy fish oil at any trapper supply. Now, I do it a little bit different. Being down here in the south, I'll add two-thirds or yeah, two -thirds fish oil and one-third crawfish oil, shellfish oil. That seems, if you're wanting to trail them in somewhere, you spray that on the ground and they're coming. Put just a little bit around the lip of the trap, they're coming. Y'all got any questions? Put them in the comments. I'll have a few trapping videos down there in the comments.
There won't hardly be any cone trapping videos because since I started doing YouTube, you can't give a East Texas cone away, and I don't think it's going to be where you can give a cone away anywhere in the United States this year. Y'all that don't know, NAFA is bankrupt. That is a 300-year-old fur trader. They have went bankrupt because of America's policies with foreign countries. And don't run and blame Trump. This has been going on the whole eight years Obama was in. He's the one that started this. I thought Trump would fix it, and I thought there would be an upswing in trapping, but Trump hadn't fixed it. If anything, he may have made it worse. I don't know. Pre-Obama, you could sell furs, but now, eh. Now that's five or six years ago, that fur market just totally crashed. I used to, for my bobcats, I used to average $100, $125 a piece. I averaged $10, $12 on my cones. Now if I can get $25 for a bobcat, i just about do a backflip. That's why I'm not mad at them. That's why I don't trap 100 of them a year. Because I could trap 100 of them a year. No problem. There's plenty of them where I live. I'm going to get off my politics thing and tell y'all to like, share, subscribe if you ain't already, share this with everybody. Right here at the end of this video, right here, this will be one I suggest. Right here, this will be one that YouTube suggests. And right here, probably be my trapping playlist. Y'all can go through and watch all of them. But down in the description, I'll have a couple of my favorite ones listed first. Y'all go check them out. And we gone.